It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! And uh, we have the mics. Two mics, mics drink. Uh, these guys are... Yes, they you, do. You guys are the San Diego Stone, like, mascots? Is that a good word? Not really? No. no. Probably, Probably their, their biggest you fans. You guys, yeah, like, I... I yeah. You guys were the two guys that I see at every Stone event. And your Twitter name is even Stone Purist, so... That is true. Is. You just are, like, massive Stone fans. And that's, mm -hmm. I... I I love you guys because of that. That's I met you and drank with you so many times at Stone that, um, you know, it's just only fitting that we get you on the show. And Definitely like Stone. Beer. Yeah. Definitely like and Stone. We like a lot of beer. Right, but, but you're, and you're not limited beer. to it because your cellar is, like, immense and super impressive. Like, Thanks. You just have, like, tons of stuff. I mean, you have a pretty decent-sized cellar, it's too. It's not bad. Yeah. We're He's at, got more Stone than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you have the more of the Stone cellar, and you have the actual, like, all the other... Kind of stuff too. He's starting to get into it though. Like he's he's starting yeah, to expand I, a little bit more. I've, I'd say maybe eight cases of non-stone and probably fourteen cases of stone. Wow, that's awesome. So, nice. um, how long like how long have you been in craft beer? Mm -hmm. uh, about three and a half years. Three and a half years. So this is a kind of a you're a relative newbie necessarily, but you've. Taken, you've taken hold of the, the craft beer revolution and gone with it. Definitely. definitely. So that's yeah. awesome. I, I mean, it, it basically started out, I was in a liquor store and it, it was going to be, you know, six pack of Coors, right? And I, I see a stone Old Guardian 07 sitting on the shelf and I'm like, five ninety nine, Shit. It must be damn good for five ninety nine. <laughs> I could get a whole 12 pack of Coors for five ninety nine. So I'm like... All right, let's take a chance on it. So I got I got a bomber of 07 Old Guardian. Wow, that is not a crossover beer, even a little bit. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's diving head for yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like exactly. I went straight from macro brewed lagers to barley wines. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I see a gargoyle and 11.2 some odd percent, and and I was like, I'm gonna try this. <laughs> He's like, this beer is awesome. And, and one bomber did it for the night. So ever since then. I have been Stone Pierced. Nice. Hold on. That's awesome. And how did you get the name? <clears throat> I was at Stone for Winter Storm, and there was a girl sitting at the bar next to me, and she was like, you should try this beer. I don't remember what it was. And, and I was like, no, I only drink Stone. And, and she's like, what are you, a purist or something? <laughs> and, and from then on... Ding. Thing, yeah. So, but you're you are not that way now. You'll drink other beers All besides stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. That's good. So, and what about you? You how long have you been? Probably about the same time. About the same yeah. time. Really? Yeah. That's interesting because I when you meet you when you, when you guys are around and whatever it, you get the sense that you both have been around craft beer for yeah you it, both, a really long time. You both are kind of intimidating. <laughs> well, it sort of feels that not, way. You know, just and, because I I assume. Not, not that the length of time you've been in, into craft beer has anything to do with it, but I just assume you're both very knowledgeable, where well, I am really, I'm kind of, but I'm not as knowledgeable as you know, right. a lot of you know, it's, We all got to start somewhere, and like, you know, it's, it's a slippery slope. I mean, it hasn't really <laughs> been that long, no, but, right about that. you know, it's, you, I get really into things, and yeah. craft beer is an easy thing to get into. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a very, it's a great thing to be a geek about, because yeah. you can just obsess about so many things. Yeah, the beer geek, love the shirt. <laughs> I have that on my, back of my laptop, so, you know, it's just, it's just, it's so awesome. And then, you know, other beer geeks are great to hang out with and drink with, and um, I think we had one of the most epic bottle sharing parties at, uh, was it Martin and Kristen's going away party? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and was just, that was the first time that I ever really just experienced that whole, like, potluck beer kind of yeah. thing, and it was just so, it was epic. So what are we doing today? Today we're doing, yeah, what are we doing? We're doing some very, <laughs> What are we doing uh, first, I guess, is really the question. Well... Uh, let's see, we've got two vintages of Bigfoot, so that's a little, okay. a little bit about cellaring. Okay, and so now you, you sell your beers, and I'm going to pop, we're going to do the O2 first, right? There's an O2. I'll pop the O2. Oh yeah, you're going to pop the O2. And a He's like, get, get that thing away from there. The, an O2 Bigfoot and a 2010 Bigfoot, so yeah. we're going to yeah. see how they taste, you know, obviously. That's the, the ultimate, like, not quite a vertical, but it's the, it's a side the bookends. Side. Yeah, it's yeah. the bookends. Yeah, right. it's a eight year difference between the beers. Yeah. This beer is eight years old. And wow. having uh, 98 through 10 recently, we basically came to the conclusion that 01 to 03 are, are the prime, prime years yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Huh, wow. So now you're gonna open this with the back of a lighter. Talk about that for a minute. 
We don't damage our bottle caps. <laughs> We're collectors, we save the caps. And we make magnets out of them. So, rather than use a tool such as... <laughs> Something destructive, I mean, angry. It. It'll bend it. It's mean. <laughs> this we, scares small children. We use the end of a lighter, so I, I just put my, my hand around it like this, and I place a lighter right here for leverage, and then... <laughs> Just like Watch that. out. Wow. <laughs> Flawless. That just happened. Unbent cap. Oh, wow. Believe it, folks. So now if I just bent this in half, you'd probably punch me in the face, huh? I've got one more. He's <laughs> all, <laughs> like, oh, whatever. I'd like to have two. So I'm going to go ahead and pour. <laughs> and we're drinking these out of taster glasses because, you know, as much as we all want to pop an O2 for ourselves, <laughs> that would just be wrong. Smell it. Mm. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, that's crazy aroma. I don't think there's any oxidation. Mm -mm. Yeah, sometimes I'm surprised how old, mm. old we are without oxidation. That's great. Still a hot presence. Yeah, that also surprises me. Actually, a fairly strong hot presence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. A lot of mmm and aahing going on because, you know, for eight years you have to take a moment to appreciate what it is that you're drinking. I mean, this is something that was brewed before a lot of people were even into craft beer. You oh, know? yeah. It's like people even I wasn't as a whole, yet. yeah, as a whole, people were just weren't even into craft beer when they were making this stuff, this, this incredibly yeah. amazing beer right now. And that's one of the things I really love about Sierra Nevada, that they just, they have always kind of been on the edge just doing that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, even when it wasn't popular. And I, I think they've been brewing Bigfoot for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. When did they start? 83? Or 80, like that. 87 or so? I don't remember. The 2008 bottles, I think, say 25th anniversary of Bigfoot. Right, right. Like that. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's, this is this has really held out good. really well. Now, how do you sell wow. your beers to keep them from getting oxidized or to improperly age? Or Well, usually you try to keep them as close to between 50 and 60 degrees. So mm -hmm. 55 is a good, happy medium. Um, just light and heat's the worst thing for cellaring beer. Right. right. So, I mean, I have a, a freezer that I've converted into a 55 degree cellar, and that's where I've been keeping most of my stuff. Now, you're lar you're, it's a freezer, it's not a refrigerator, right? Right, it's it's not okay. a refrigerator, but I've got a um, it's a temp what's called a temp controller, and right. you you can get that at any like homebrew shop, mm -hmm. but you plug that in between the wall and the freezer. Well, I ask that because a lot of people will just use kind of old refrigerators. Yeah, and, and refrigerators are designed to dry things out to keep food fresher exactly. and that kind of thing. And so it, you're better off getting an actual freezer that because they're not designed to do that. They mm -hmm. they freeze, so they don't, they're not worried about humidity. Exactly. Um, but the fridge will dry it out, and then if you notice in the bottle cap, I don't know if you can get a shot of that at all, but um, it's lined with a plastic ring. And so the plastic ring dries out and contracts, and you get oxidized beer. Now we're going to go ahead and open up the 2010, and we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison. Let me try it with the lighter. Oh, John, oh, to John right. wants to show his skills off. I don't know if I have any skills with this. Grace <laughs> the bottom. Oh, oh pretty good. Damn. Oh, pretty good. Anybody can do that. I can't. I've tried it several times, oh. and I end up hurting myself. It took you a while as well, Mike. <laughs> you got to really grip the bottle. Yeah. yeah. And turn your hand into more of a I'm just rock. always, I'm, I'm such a pussy. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to hurt myself. And then I end up hurting myself. Oh, yeah. A lot more carbonation. Oh, yeah. You can see, yeah. Definitely get a lot more of the hop aroma, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and it makes the O2 smell a lot sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not to, to discredit the O2. No, not at that. all. It's just different. And, and actually, when we cracked the O2 at first, it, I got a lot of hops in the nose, but after opening this one. <laughs> yeah, it's like you think O2 has a lot right. of hops, which it does. If we'd gone the other direction, it, yeah. If we'd gone the other direction, you'd be like, oh. There's no but, hops, and yeah. But they're, surprisingly, there's, there's still a lot of hops in that. This seems like, I don't know if the, if the alcohol content is different, but this seems a lot, not, I'm, not, I'm getting that, not heat, but I'm it's tasting like, the it's, alcohol. Yeah, it's, people call yeah. that booziness. Yeah, it's the booziness on the, yeah. on the 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why some people like the cellar stuff because it, it, it mellows, mellows them, yeah. the beer out. And, and so some people like that, some people don't. Some people like yeah. it both. I mean, I love these beers yeah. both. It's aged or fresh. It's great. Now, what do you? What beers do you age? Like, obviously, you're not going to be aging Stone, uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. 
No, that's not really a good style. There's there's certain styles that tend to lend themselves to aging, mm -hmm. like like this barley wine and um, imperial stouts, that kind of thing. Old and ales. Old ales, ales yeah. Um, usually, you're not going to do like a double IPA. Well, usually. Usually, but there mm -hmm. are some that are, that are actually some? age really well. I think many would drive down and probably punch you in the face. Yeah. If you if you did Planet of the Elder. Yeah, he's, or younger even. Or younger, yeah, yeah. He's very against it. I mean, and double IPAs. I mean, they're supposed to be hoppy. There's supposed to be a lot of hops, mm -hmm. and when you age a hoppy beer like this, the hops sort of mill out, but it brings out other characters. Like right. I mean, this one is so hoppy and boozy that like there's certain nuances that come out from the older one, like some chocolateiness, right? And the, yeah, and different things. There's definitely some different flavors, and that was yeah. one of the things I noticed when Planet of the Younger was released. That. Like, after about a month, people were like, oh, don't even bother going to get it. Like, don't even go to bother to drink it. And I had it, I had it the day, not the day it was released, but the day after, because mm -hmm. it was a growler that was overnighted that I had some from. Um, I had it about a week afterwards. I had it again about a month afterwards. And then I had it again two months afterwards. And I have to say that every time I had it, I had a strong hop character that held up really nicely. And again, this is, this is a beer that's strictly kegged, so it's going to age much better yeah. than your typical bottle stuff, obviously. But I just, I really think that there's a little bit too much drama involved with like, oh my god, it's, it's a week and a half old, just don't drink it. Yeah. Well, I understand right. the drama though, because Vinny's going for that fresh taste. Yeah, well, and I respect, yeah, yeah, and so. I respect that Vinny wants it drank at a certain time, and that's his prerogative. It's his beer. You, you respect the well, brewer's that's wishes. Well, that's what right. he wants it to have its best characteristics. Right. Yeah. But my if thing is, like, I wouldn't thump my nose up at it because it's only been But there if it's for been sitting on a shelf for a month and it's not yeah. refrigerated, yeah. like he demands it to be, right. and you're not going to get that taste and people might go, what is right. this? this? This isn't all, this isn't, you know. Nor will you ever see younger on the shelf. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so that's why so he doesn't I, do it. Yeah, he doesn't bother. I mean, yeah. that's what I heard. I would love to see how younger would age, though. I would like to see him can it. Ooh. Yeah, can't. I'd like to see him can it and he can age the cans. Yeah, <laughs> he's good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, never know. See, you that's know, and that's know. the thing. And I think you know, it's from what I've heard is is that you know, people Pliny the Younger is one of those you know sort of rare beers that comes out once a year. Yeah. And I, I don't. It's got it's, a mythicalness. Yeah, to and it. it's like if it sits on the shelf and somebody thinks, oh, Pliny the Younger, finally, mm -hmm. you know, I finally get to, f I found it, but they don't realize that it's like three months old. Or, right. You know, right. They don't check any day codes or whatever, and they're like, wow, that wasn't good. And then, you it know, makes him look bad. It makes the beer exactly. look bad. It's yeah, like stone. Sure. They've exactly. never spent sure. any money on advertising. It's all word of mouth. So it's. Yeah, you know, and I think it, I think it's important to know what you're getting into when you're drinking a beer that's a little older like that. But I also think that you should take that leap and try it. Yeah. And see what different characters. I'm not, and I'm not saying there's anything yeah. wrong with trying right. it. So I mean, why not that one? Then? I do. So speaking of yeah, speaking <laughs> of aging double IPAs, uh, Stone's 10 year anniversary was a double IPA, and you have aged it. So it's about four because years they're old. up to their 14th anniversary. Now. That's right. This four is the 14th years. anniversary coming so. up, and I think it's going to be what about two and a half, three about actually been about a month. From now, as the show is airing, not from now that we're filming. Pretty much the 14th. Anniversary. Yeah, the 14th, 14th anniversary Close is enough. August 21st. Uh, totally check it out and get some tickets if you if they're not Got sold mine. out already. Uh, yeah, I got. Oh, I, I, you doing the both days and the Friday oh, yeah, night? Rare taste. Yeah, you have to do that. So. Yeah, Friday the 135 dollars. Um, it's totally worth it for charity. Too. Yeah, it's and it goes to charity. It's, it's to charity. you know mine. Go, mine went to animals and children. So. I think mine went to the environment. And mine went to animals and children as well. Yeah, because I like animals and children. children yeah, children I like, like whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> children. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swig the ten because no, no, no. We we're gonna finish our beer and come back. <laughs> come back and come back. back. Okay. And we're gonna fine. The, uh, we're gonna do it properly. <laughs> Enjoy 2002 craft beer advocate. This week's signed copy of the Beer Wars DVD goes to our craft beer advocate Sean. Sean Hales from Philadelphia, PA. He says, MBT, as I've written about over the past two years on my website, melodybrewing.com, I eat, drink, live, and breathe good beer. I've been a home brewer for close to 10 years and in that time have advocated the drinking of good beer and the pairing with good food and good times. It all started one random night when a friend of mine and I headed to the now famous Monk's Cafe in Philly, Pennsylvania. We went in for mussels and we left full of Belgian beer. I'll never forget reading through the beer bible an amazing taste of my first La Trappe Triple and West Mall Abbey Double. In the beginning, after that first night, my mission was to drink every Trappist ale available in the U.S. Luckily, that could be done easily at Monk's. I then started home brewing, and with that came the questions from family and friends asking if I brewed this in my bathtub. They really didn't get it, or get good beer. 
Over time, I've not only drank the Trappist, I've sought out, traded, and drank the top 10 rated beers in the world, visited big and small breweries everywhere I travel, and always bring beer to my favorite BYOB instead of wine. After years of brewing, challenging friends to drink good beer went out, exploring breweries with family and friends, and brewing my own beer for them to taste and to enjoy, I'm proud to say I believe I've shifted how people look at beer, at least the people in my life. I now get emails asking what they should drink, or what brewery to visit when out of town. Some text me just a picture of what they're drinking. Others have started to homebrew as well under my tutelage. It has been an amazing few years and I've had a lot of great experiences and can thank craft beer for lots of them. Now, like most crazy homebrewers, I'm exploring how to take my passion, my obsession, and turn it into a career. I'm writing about my ideas on my website and in my beer discussions I talk about the experiences of drinking beer and how I pair beer with atmosphere and event, not only with food. I feel beers pair with music and conversation as well, just like a silky goat cheese or a farmhouse salad pairs with a saison. I'm proud to be a craft beer drinker because for me, beer pairs with experiences and there's nothing better than good beer, good conversation, and good friends. That is what craft beer is to me. Keep spreading the word of craft beer. Cheers, Sean. Cheers to you, Sean, and thanks for writing in. If you'd like to be a craft beer advocate, send us your story at advocate at newbrewthursday.com. Send us your video, email, or MP3 files, and we'll get it on the show. Boom. So we're going to go ahead and pop this uh, 10th anniversary open. And uh, it's a rare cap, so I'm going to let somebody else do it, because uh, I will let the pro take care screw of it. that up. It's a rare cap. I will be punching the... Ooh. There we go. All right. That he's so. going to pocket. No. <laughs> Perfection. Yoink. Thank you, Mike. Got a nice Thank color you, on it. So their 10th anniversary was a double... IPA? Double yeah. IPA. Yeah. Mm. Look at all the a, a tad of Looks. oxidation on there. Yeah, well, it's got a good carbonation. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is, uh. It's does not, uh, the nose on this does not appeal to me. I don't know if it's the oxidation. Mm, it tastes or, great, though. I think. Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad actually. Yeah, you're right. It does have a really good flavor to it. It's it's very sweet. It's refreshing. Yep. Um, but it, yeah, it's got a refreshing quality to it. It's you're definitely not getting a lot of hops off of this. Yeah, the hops are no, falling. No, and that's mm -hmm. to be expected. But it's very, very, very smooth. And I, it's just I think the the nose throws me off a little bit because it's just it not quite where it should be. I don't think, but. Seems pretty this dry. Is, it definitely transformed into a barley wine at this point. Yeah, mm. it really almost kind of reminds me of a sort of a sweeter, less hoppy, like the Bigfoot. I mean, it's, right. it's like exactly. that barley wine flavor. So, And well, that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know. It's different. It's different. It's not what probably Stone intended it to taste no. like. But Right. Like, Even though the, the nose isn't exactly what I expected, like the flavor on this and the profile of how it's held up over the last four years is really impressive. And I just, I am thoroughly digging this beer. This is incredible. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, like you were saying earlier, some people get really hung up. Oh, it's, you know, an IPA shouldn't be cellar. Right. I hear so many people saying that, but you know what? Try it. You know, a lot about cellaring is, you know, try something, you know, yeah. maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. This is good. Well, and, and you're not spending $185 on the bottle. You're no. spending, you know, five or six bucks when they get released, and you're not going to lose anything if it does end up tasting like garbage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's it's a fun experiment to try, you know, yeah. to age beers and whatever. Because I know I've got a couple of 13th anniversaries that, I'm, that I have in my Same cellar here. that are, it says on the bottle, like, enjoy in 2009, but... You know, I'm going to wait a few more years and see what they taste like. See and, what happens. Yeah, because I, I loved it in 2009. It was one of the, it was the favorite beer for 2009 for me. Mike, thank you for letting us come into your home. Seriously, and dude. To, thank you, Stephen. And attacking your cellar. And You've opened some beer that I probably will never have again. Exactly. <laughs> so, never so. And Mike, thank you for being you and being here. And cheers, thank you. cheers to you. Cheers, Mike. And Thanks. as always, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. cheers.